Hi, it's Martha. This is the wonderful Bikel. And we're here talking about her life purpose and her sense that she's not enough. She's not as big and important and valuable a human being as she needs to be to live the life that she feels is hers. Tell me where I'm wrong, Bikel. Yeah, so I think I have an idea of what I'd like to do and be when I'm all grown up. You know, I'm almost 40, so no rush. Uh, and But I feel constantly held back by this feeling of that I'm a total fraud. And I think it has a lot to do of with how I grew up, which is not stuff I really get into. And I've, I've done my fair share of therapy. But I feel like I don't have, if anybody really knew me and knew what I wanted to do with my life, they would just kind of laugh and point. And stare. Okay. <laughs> so you do have a really uh, a, a tough, tough history, and I know you're not trapped in it. That you don't feel at all like lost in the past or anything. But it was just in case you guys are wondering, it was really, really, really bad. Um, and so when you you said you have a lot of friends who are Reiki healers and and shamans and people who help the world, is that the feeling that you have for your own path? Because it sounded like that when we were oh, talking before. Yes, yeah, absolutely. But uh, it always felt like I needed somebody to <laughs> choose me. I don't know. Like it wasn't an okay thing to want that for myself because that would be putting on airs and, and play acting as opposed to somebody choosing me and telling me that it was the right thing. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. And I want you to ask it with your head. Then I want you to wait for your heart to answer it, okay? Okay. So the question is, did no one choose me to be the special healer in this life? Did no one choose me to be a healer? I know it's an odd question. Was I not chosen as a healer? My head is going, that is a ridiculous question. My heart is saying, it kind of went boom, boom, boom in a really lovely way. Um, it was a sort of, oh, co of course. <laughs> um, you know who heals the world most? You know, I used to work with a professor, a wonderful professor at Harvard who was an, a, an expert on slavery. And one of his findings was that the only societies that ever had the concept of freedom in the ancient world were uh, societies that had slaves. So it was the slaves who understood freedom. Oh. It is when something is taken from us that we know acutely what the lack of it really means. And then we develop this enormous compassion for those who are in the place we once were. So when your heart answered, Try this question. Try the opposite question. Was I chosen to be a healer? Ask it with your head and let your heart answer. Yeah. 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 You feel like yeah. You feel like That's the feeling of the truth, Mikkel. That's not the feeling of telling yourself a happy story. That's not the feeling of fooling yourself. When you tell yourself the truth, your whole chest and your whole body begin to relax. And that's why polygraph machines work. So when you say, I'm, I'm not good enough, I'm not, there's no way, I can't be that, I have this terrible past, and the pain is there and the tension is there, that's not the feeling of truth. Yeah? But when you let your, your, your mind be silent and you let the heart answer, it has a very different system of values. Yeah. You're not trying to heal people's minds. You're trying to heal their hearts. Tell me where I'm wrong. No. Yes. Correct. <laughs> and, and, and it is a pattern throughout my life that people even – when I was younger would come to me, ask for advice. And sometimes these were not people that I was even necessarily friends with. And we would talk it out, hash it out, 
I can't say that I gave good advice, but it seemed to be I was the person that people came to again and again, even sometimes when it left me going, I don't really know why you're asking me, but okay, we can talk about this, you know, so. Have you ever had the experience of having someone listen to you and understand you? Only recently, only like in the last couple of years. Yeah. I have a couple of memories of some of somebody just say, looking at you and saying, Mikhail, tell me about yourself. And then saying, I hear you. I see you. I've yeah. been there. Yeah. I've been there. They didn't need your advice. They needed your presence. Yeah. They needed the presence of someone who had been there. I, at one point in my life, I got some death threats and I kind of freaked out and I needed to be with one friend of mine who had been held at gunpoint by someone who said he was going to kill him because I just needed to look into one person's eyes and say, I'm afraid someone will kill me and have him say, I have been there. So what happened to you as a child was kind of everything, <laughs> kind of everything. And what I see is a, this intelligent, radiant, beautiful being with so much experience of pain that someone, I would come to you and look at you and tell you my problems. And I know just looking at you on a computer, knowing you for 10 minutes, I can see in your eyes that you would understand pain and the recovery from pain, not just like I'm stuck in pain, but transcendence. You've already done I talked yesterday on Facebook about samurai swords and how they're this amazing thing. And the, the swordsmith would take the best material available and just beat it and beat it and beat it and fold it and beat it and beat it and beat it and heat it and beat it and, beat it and, beat it and yeah. just to end. And then you had this shining thing that was like a, a piece of high art and high technology at the same time. And it was supposed to have a soul more soul than anything. So ask yourself another couple of questions. Ask from the head, but listen to the answer from here. Try, I'm not good enough to help the world. Am I good enough to help the world? Try asking that question. Am I good enough to help the world? Am I good enough to help the world? Ask with the head. Yeah, the head still says no. <laughs> Right, and the, heart, and the heart says something different. So I've got I want some. To leave this and focus more on this. Did you know that the heart sends more messages to the brain than the brain sends to the heart? So I want you to start listening. In our culture, we think our bodies are machines that take our heads to meetings, right? Our heads are the important things. Yeah. But in other cultures, we think with the whole body. Yeah. And this is what knows purpose. You wrote that you want to know your life's purpose. Ask with the head, but hear with the heart. Am I good enough to be a healer? Yeah. It still feels like putting on airs. I'm, I'm going to have to work on it. I mean, because my heart is so, my heart gets so excited and happy and feels full. And my head just immediately, it's like, and it all kind of gets stuck right here, right? And it's like they're meeting in the middle and trying to fight it out and see who's going to get to have to speak about it. Um, Interesting. Okay, so try just doing it and relaxing. Relaxing your breathing, relaxing your throat. And now the head can talk as much as it wants. <laughs> I want you to feel the answer in your heart. I am here to help. I am here to serve. I am here to heal. And I am good enough. And my life has made me good enough for this. Ah, that's your head. See? Breathe. It's all about breath. Bre breathe. Relax. Looking up into the, you're looking up into your left. I have beautiful cottonwood trees and, I'm, and the sun is coming through them right now. So that's my, my yeah. happy place. So you can talk to them, but it also is activating part of your brain that is like you're looking for an answer. Try looking slightly down and softening your gaze. Soften your eyes. Soften your throat. Receive. Receive. 
You've been through pain, now receive love. Am I good enough for this? Well, that was certainly easier that time around. Thank you, you did so well. <laughs> you did so well, Raquel, because all that trauma keeps us really in fight or flight. Yeah. And to soften your eyes, soften your breath, and wait for the heart to speak. That's the way out, honey. Yeah. That is the way out of the last remnants of all that pain. You did a beautiful job. Um, thank you. Thank you thank for your you. help. Thank you for picking me. Thank you for letting me meet you and gush a little bit. And um, I would do more if we had more time, to be honest. Um, and thank you for all the work you're doing. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Just me too. We are same, same. Yeah. I can and see I hope <laughs> Come to Idaho. All of my shaman healer Reiki friends want to meet you. They said, you get to talk to Martha Beck. I said, hell yes. <laughs> but you're in Idaho. They can have, they have you. They don't need me. <laughs> really, oh. seriously, Bacala, you are a samurai sword. You are a samurai sword. Thank Just you. sit and know it, and everything's going to be fine. It is, isn't it? It's all going to be better than fine. It's going to be brilliant. It's magic. Yeah. All the tough stuff. Now you get the magic. Yeah. Okay. Just have to let yourself open. Ooh, ooh, it came, it's coming through the door. The magic just came through the door. <laughs> the door opened behind her. <laughs> You're like, oh, yes. well, that's magic. No, that's it's a, a literal door. That, that is magic. That's my kid. Yes. <laughs> that, that's it. All right. Yes. Well, mwah, thank you so much. You did a really good job. Just repeat that exercise every day. Soft eyes. Ask. Wait for the heart. It will never fail you. Thank you.